I've long been a fan of Formula One, but to be honest, I've sort of lost a bit of interest over the last few years. However, it is actually a true fact that Formula One is driving innovation in electric cars in a way that most people just have no idea. Formula One has long been the proving ground for automotive innovation. While fans obviously get excited about the speed, what often goes unnoticed is the incredible level of technological development and stress taking place under the surface of the vehicles you hear, which sound like they're just internal combustion race cars, but that's not quite true. This is particularly the case when it comes to battery technology. While it is true that the batteries in Formula One cars are very small, the reality is the testing done on those batteries in Formula One has actually helped EV battery companies to innovate at a much faster pace. Now though, with the future of electric mobility at stake, F1's behind the scenes race to advance energy storage and hybrid systems is actually shaping the EVs that everyday consumers will drive tomorrow. Now, I may sound like an, an old Formula One fanboy, but the truth is I'm far from it. I rarely even watch the races. I'll occasionally watch the highlights on YouTube. So what am I talking about here? Well, first of all, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'm Sam Evans and you're watching The Electric Viking. Would love to have you as a member of the channel. I'll put a link in the description below. The 2014 introduction of hybrid power units in Formula One marked a significant departure from the sport's gas guzzling routes. These power units combine an internal combustion engine, a very, very small one, 1.6 liters, with an advanced energy recovery system, ERS, which is basically the regen braking you see in electric cars today, transforming what was once wasted energy, heat and kinetic force into additional power and efficiency. The system includes MGUK, a motor generator unit, kinetic, and that captures energy from braking. An MGUH motor generator unit, heat, and that harvests energy from turbocharger heat. And then an energy store, a high performance lithium ion battery that collects and redeploys this energy on demand. But that's all about to change because of one key factor. These systems allow an F1 car to recover and use up to 120 kilowatt, around 180 horsepower, of electric power, delivering bursts of acceleration, improving fuel efficiency and cutting emissions, all while maintaining insane performance. Which gets me to my point here. The electric motors in Formula One cars can send 120 kilowatt to the, to the car, right? That's a lot, but not that much when you think about it. Because the system power of a Formula One car is actually 900 total horsepower. So 180 horsepower out of 900, it's significant, but not that significant. That's about to change. New regulations for 2026 mean the power the EV part of the Formula One car can send to the rear wheels is going to go from 120 kilowatt to 360. And that is game changing because that means that more than half of the car's power is now going to come from its electrical system. You can imagine engineers are working feverishly to make Formula One cars for next year, which will be entirely different to the cars they're using this year. The 2026 F1 regulations will push the sport into a more electric future. Under the new rules, electric output from the hybrid system will increase from 120 kilowatt to 350, making electric power equal to the internal combustion engine. The MGUH will be eliminated, simplifying the system. Energy recovery from braking though will double, dramatically enhancing hybrid efficiency, meaning the cars will actually use much less fuel. These shifts will require teams to massively upgrade their battery systems, and they really need the newest batteries from companies with solid state batteries, but that might not happen or it might. They need these batteries to store and deliver much higher amounts of energy under extreme racing conditions. In short, F1 cars will rely much more on batteries than ever before. And that's where solid state batteries come into the picture. And if not solid state, 
than other advanced batteries from companies like CATL with their condensed battery that have an energy density of up to 451 hours per kilogram. This is what Formula One manufacturers and brands desperately need in their cars for next season if they want to remain competitive. Without those batteries, they will get annihilated. They have no choice. The game changer, solid state batteries and other high energy density batteries. As energy demands in F1 are about to grow exponentially, current lithium ion technology is approaching its limits. Enter solid state batteries. And when you think about it, who are the most well-known solid state battery companies right now? They're actually mostly based in the United States. A next-gen solution will define or redefine motorsport and probably everyday EVs as well within the next couple of years. So what makes solid state batteries different? Well, they replace the liquid electrolyte found in lithium-ion cells with a solid material, improving thermal stability. If a Formula One car crashes, and it happens often, there is a chance a, a lithium battery with a liquid electrolyte can set fire. And that's not a situation you really want in a Formula One car. Solid state batteries basically eliminate that risk. They also offer higher energy density, meaning more power and more range with less weight. They are less prone to overheating or fire, enhancing safety, and they can charge faster and potentially degrade more slowly over time. Mercedes AMG's high performance powertrains division, the same group behind their F1 engines, is now working with partners to test solid state batteries in consumer EVs like the EQS, while simultaneously preparing to introduce them into F1 power units by or after 2026. They want them in their Formula One cars as soon as possible. No one wants to lose. The extreme demands of racing, high power draw, constant charging, discharging, and tight packaging make F1 the perfect environment to push solid state batteries to their absolute limits. If these batteries can thrive in an F1 car, they'll almost certainly succeed on the road. Unlike traditional motorsport where tech really trickles down, F1's hybrid and battery innovations are already helping shape the future of mobility. Here's how. Thermal management systems developed for F1 batteries are being used to keep consumer EV packs cooler and safer. And this means EV batteries now last much longer than they used to. Weight saving materials like carbon composites and exotic alloys lower vehicle weight and extend range. Energy recovery systems in road EVs are becoming more advanced thanks to F1 derived regen braking principles. Now though, with solid state batteries entering the fray, automakers like Mercedes-Benz, Ferrari, and even Red Bull powertrains are accelerating their plans to bring this revolutionary technology to market as fast as possible, benefiting from F1's intense R&D cycle and the enormous amounts of money that are poured into the sport. F1's influence reaches beyond the race circuit, as you can see. Automotive giants are increasingly building R&D pipelines that flow from the paddock to the production line. Porsche, for example, has leveraged its endurance racing programs to improve battery durability in the Porsche Taycan. Meanwhile, Aston Martin and Honda are using F1 battery management software to enhance power delivery and charging in their upcoming electric models. By integrating lessons from high performance racing into everyday EV design, automakers are creating more efficient, safer, and better performing vehicles, and they're doing so faster than ever. And this means that EVs are developing at a far faster pace than internal combustion powered vehicles. As F1 inches closer to full electrification, which many believe is inevitable, its role as an innovation lab for the global auto industry will only expand. Solid state batteries and other high energy density batteries, once seen as a long-term breakthrough, are now on the near horizon, thanks in part to the extreme development pressures of Formula One. Within a few years, this is what we're gonna see. 
F1 teams racing with solid state battery packs capable of delivering ultra high discharge rates. Road cars with 1,000 kilometers or more of range, potentially even 1,000 miles of range, thanks to F1 validated energy density gains. Faster, safer charging tech refined through the demands of motorsport. You know, my final thoughts on this. I really think this is legit. This is not marketing. And the truth is, billions of dollars go into Formula One. And it's the situation where products have to work. They've got to, manufacturers are forced. It's like being forced to go and refine yourself in the flames of hell. It's stressful. Formula One, though, is it's often viewed as entertainment. But its true legacy lies in what it builds behind the scenes. The work F1 teams are doing today to push battery technology forward, especially solid state, but also other high energy density batteries, is laying the foundation for the next era of clean, fast and efficient mobility. And let's not forget, I mean, regen braking is going to have to come a long way. Now they have to, re they have to refine their regen braking. They've got to make it capable of, of actually harnessing far more power. That's the kind of tech we could see in EVs as well. In many ways, the invisible race off the track is just as important as the one on it. And thanks to the cutting edge battery tech developed in Formula One, the EVs we drive tomorrow will go farther, charge faster, and perform better, all while keeping us safer. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.